When you think of the word Kamni, do you often think of this? My cousin Rehan married an Irish woman and he was kicked out of the family. Nobody is allowed to talk to him. Why didn't you tell me any of this? Because I didn't think you'd fucking understand and I was fucking right. And I love that the one person who makes me feel like I could take a fucking breath I can't have without completely destroying you. Those clips that I just showed you were from comedies. Now I know th those weren't the fun times of laughter that we all get from watching Step Brothers, but the fact remains that those were comedies. Well, more so dramedies than comedies. What's a dramedy, you may ask? Simply put, a dramedy is a comedy with more dramatic elements than you would get in a traditional comedy. So for instance, Ferris Bueller is a comedy, while The Edge of Seventeen is a dramedy. One goes for pure laughs, while the other goes for both laughs and cries. So for about the past two decades or so, the landscape of comedy has been changing rapidly. We're beginning to see more dramedies than we are comedies. Long gone are the days of the insane Adam McKay comedies like the Anchorman series. Now we have Adam McKay directing films like The Big Short and Vice. Studios and filmmakers are beginning to see and understand that while audiences want escapism, they also want stories and characters that they can relate to and understand. While we still get some pure straight comedies here and there, audiences are really starting to notice and appreciate dramedies and what they can offer. However, there's one man that is both responsible for this turn, but who's also really struggling with this concept, Judd Apatow. For those of you that somehow don't know who he is, Judd Apatow has been producing, writing, and directing some of the biggest comedies for the past two decades. He's worked on projects like Freaks and Geeks, Girls, Knocked Up, Superbad, and the list goes on and on and on. Recently, Apatow released his newest film, The King of Satin Island, and after watching it, it really got me thinking about how Apatow either doesn't know how or doesn't seem to care if his comedies are dramedies. When you go back and look at almost every one of his films, each of them tells stories about real people in real situations rather than an over-the-top comedy like, say, Ted for instance. While his films aren't technically dramedies, they have helped pave the way for dramedies to start becoming more mainstream and accepted by mainstream audiences. The odd thing with that is that Apatow has a big problem with balancing tone. You see, in every story told, whether it be film, TV, books, you name it, tone is key to how the audience is supposed to interpret the story being told to them. When someone watches Schindler's List, they understand immediately what the tone is supposed to be, and this allows them to emotionally understand the story even more. When someone watches Avengers Endgame, they know that while this is a film that has a lot of emotional and dramatic moments, they're still able to laugh and have fun along the way. Films like those understand how to balance the multiple tones they have, and in the end, the audience isn't confused by whether or not they were supposed to be having a good time or not. Now let's look at Apatow's films, specifically his 2009 comedy, Funny People. This film stars Adam Sandler and tells the story of George Simmons, a comedian who's just learned he has a form of leukemia that realistically cannot be cured and he will probably die. Learning about this, Simmons hires an up-and-coming comedian, Ira Wright, played by Seth Rogen, to help him write stand-up uh, jokes and be his assistant. During this time, Simmons begins to come to terms with the reality that he will probably die and he begins to reflect on his life and who he's become since he got incredibly famous. But, just as he's beginning to accept his circumstances and become a better person, Simmons learns that he's been cured and he's no longer going to die. This is where the film shifts and we begin to see that Simmons hasn't grown or changed at all. When he meets up with a past love, Laura, played by Leslie Mann, Simmons begins to contemplate the prospect of being a father and changing his ways. However, after spending the weekend with Laura and her kids, Simmons realizes that he can't have this kind of life because of who he's become. At the end of the film, Simmons ends up right back where he started, rich and famous, but alone with every bridge burned behind him. Now from that synopsis, you'd think that this would make for a really great dramedy, and you'd be right. But here's the problem. Apatow did not balance the comedy and the drama properly. Most scenes of drama are either upended with jokes or Apatow never allows enough time to let the drama sink in. There is one scene though that does let the drama sink in well. Hey, what else? Give me more. This is, um, this is unbelievable. <sighs> Shadows are falling and I'm running out of breath. Keep me in your heart for a while. Here, Apatow allowed the audience to see and understand that Simmons is starting to realize the reality of the situation. While before, during the scene, Simmons was using comedy to deflect on the depressing nature of the songs, here he sits and listens to what's being sung and realizes that his time is short. Rather than make a joke, Simmons storms off in anger. Throughout the film, Simmons hides his sorrow and depression in jokes that no one but Ira can see as a cry for help. Remember in Rick and Morty when Tiny Rick did his cry for help dance? <laughs> Let me out, what you see is not the same person as me, my life's a lie, I'm not who you're looking at, let me out to 
set me free. While that was explicit in what the writers were trying to get across, Avatar allowed the audience to be in Iris' shoes and see what he was seeing, a man in pain that has no one to consult with. While I wish the whole film was like this, sadly most other moments of drama are either upended by jokes or the drama just doesn't get the time it needs to sink in properly. To understand what I mean, let's take a look at the film The Big Sick. Her dad just called and said that the contracts were her because the infection has reached her heart. Uh, which, which means she... <laughs> Which means she could die. This is how you do dramedy. No forced jokes, no cutting early, just allowing the moment and the drama to sink in for the audience. It's real, it hurts, but it's good storytelling. Avatar wants to tell these kinds of stories, and for the most part, he gets really close, but he deflects and falls back on what he knows best, and that's making people laugh. I don't know if it's fear that he can't do drama or he worries he'll get something wrong, but as Funny People has shown us, he has the capabilities of doing just that. Hopefully he'll find the right balance and courage to do pure dramedy, but right now we only have a misconstrued puzzle rather than a perfect picture.